in the heart of Yorkshire. Our health service is hard at work. Hello, Barnsley Casualty. Open. Just show up to me. A dedicated team. You're strong. <laughs> You're the first person to say that. Oh, there we go. Working 24 hours a day, seven days a week. We were run away. I think I've just about got it cracked, this job. Ready for anything. Don't no swear. What are you swearing for? And everything. I've been up at eight, you know. Well, you're stuck with me now. Wow. Uh, I'm done, boys. Fucking you, fucking you. Have you been at all? No. Facing life. Back from the moon. <laughs> and death. Trauma. Oh, no, no. And tears. Yeah. Supporting each other through the toughest shifts. I just need the use of a cubicle. I'm not coming on then it's off me warm. Here's the time. Oh, lovely. It's like champagne. Baptism of fire into Barnsley, isn't it? Ah. This is Barnsley Casualty 24-7. God bless the NHS. <laughs> On shift tonight, Sister Rachel Sheard. I'm losing track of everything. Nurse Jess Hibbert. Oh, what are these? I know. I've Come on, man. Make an effort. And consultant Dr. Laura Buxton. Keep your neck very steady. We wouldn't want you to be risking any damage. Uh, did you get a pony? So get ready to share a shift. With the team at Barnsley Casualty. Oh, God, yeah. It's 7 a.m. and the night shift has had a nightmare. We have had lots of breaches due to doctor weights and initially no beds. It's not the start to her day Sister Rachel was hoping for. The dream hand will be there's no patients in the department. Put your feet up and go home. That would be the dream. We still ain't got no beds. We've got no medical beds at all. You've got no surgical beds, no gyne beds, no CCU beds. It doesn't happen. Oh, not on one of my shifts, I can tell you, <laughs> can tell you that for sure. Sister Rachel has taken over a department overflowing with patients. Long waiting times, and now... It's no GP. A key member of staff is off with COVID. So, we normally have at 10 o'clock a GP starting, who comes and takes any patients that don't need emergency care. Um, unfortunately they've not appeared. Sister Rachel now has to add the GP patients to an already long list of those waiting to see a casualty doctor. Right. Hello, Barnsley. Those with life-threatening conditions usually arrive by ambulance. The 44-year-old Gavin walked himself to hospital. Okay, so the first thing that I'm going to do is take this collar and blocks off and then I'm just going to examine your head, examine your neck. Gavin fell downstairs after blacking out. Dr Buxton urgently activates the critical spinal injury protocols. So, any pain in the back of the neck there at all? Yeah. That's sore, is it? Yeah. Okay. It's quite unusual for a young man to have blacked out, out of nowhere. Just shut your eyes and open them wide. That's not the sort of thing which you'd expect a young, fit, healthy chap to do. What I'm going to ask you to do is just a micro movement, okay? Just a little tiny nod of the head. So, and a little tiny shake of the head. Not too bad, that. It's not as bad. Not as bad. And then you're getting pain coming down this left shoulder. So, because you've got pain in the neck, we're going to put the blocks back on, keep your neck immobilised, keep you <laughs> nice and still and relaxed. You work through a system of parts of the body that are more serious than others. Ruling out injuries to certain parts before you move on to the next thing. Dr Buxton needs to begin an urgent investigation into why Gavin blacked out. A spinal injury protocol takes priority. Hi, sorry to trouble you. I'm ringing about a CT head and neck. Are you ready? He's in recess at the minute, so it, the sooner we can get his neck cleared and get him out of here, the easier it'll be for him. OK. All right, thanks for your help, mate. The consultant secures an immediate slot in radiology. They're ready, Frank. You can take them straight around. Thank you. She doesn't even wait for a nurse to help prepare Gavin. Right, Gavin, I'm just going to take all these um, bells and whistles off for you. And then we'll get you around for your scan and your x ray. Okay. I'll try to sit in and get them. No, no. I don't want you to do that yet. It's good to get. Thank you. So, in recess. 
another walk-in patient, 51-year-old Claire. Hello, is it Claire? Hello, sweetheart. My name's Brian. I want a nurse. She's been to X-ray, and Nurse Bryony is now preparing her for treatment. She's fell while she was walking her dog on canal, and she has dislocated her elbow. So we're just getting some medication out so that we can get her sedated, so that we can put her elbow back in place. Claire has already been given the usual pain relief inhaler, but it's not working. Uh, oh, uh, oh, 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 if the pain doesn't subside, they won't have a choice. Over in the hub, Dr. Buxton has the results of Gavin's CT scan. We're just scrolling through to see if there are any obvious fractures. And what she discovers is a shock. He's got a significant fracture of this cervical spine. There's a, a section of bone which has come off here. That's definitely an abnormal finding. What Dr. Buxton thought would be a routine scan has revealed a serious problem. I wasn't expecting that. <laughs> and now she'll have to break the bad news to Gavin that he's broken his neck. Rachel Dan and A&E. I've not had a GP turn in, so I'm having to bring all the GP patients back into the A&E queue. Sister Rachel is running the hub at Barnes and Casualty, but a key member of staff has called in sick with COVID. No GP turned up. Which puts even more pressure on the rest of the team to manage the growing list of patients. It's very tricky because you've just got to be prepared to deal with whatever comes through and give them the best care, the most appropriate care that we can possibly uh, Sophia, just letting you know, we haven't got a GP at the moment, so we need to bring everyone back that's gone to GP. OK. Yeah. In recess, 44-year-old Gavin is waiting to find out how serious his condition is. A tea time yesterday, uh, well, a blackout, and then fell down the steps. And then daftly did come in yesterday, so that's why I'm in here now, in an agony, absolute pain. So I didn't sleep at all last night. Having brought himself to a &E, Dr. Buxton was astounded by the result of his CT scan. I was thinking about the causes for why he might have fallen in the first place, more than what injuries he might have sustained when he fell. Just clinically, I wasn't expecting a young man to have walked into eating and to have a broken neck. But with a break this serious, she needs a second opinion from the orthopaedic team before beginning treatment. Where there's a broken bone, the bone itself becomes sharp and therefore can cause damage to the nerves and it gets a lot of swelling around it. So pressure and swelling and sharp edges of bone adjacent to very important nerve structures could cause some very serious spinal cord damage. I've sent a chap round for a CT of his neck. Would you mind having a quick look at it for me, please? Okay, so you think it's a C2 fracture with some displacement. And anything else you can spot on that? All right, lovely. I'll leave that with you. All right, thanks for your help. Cheers, bye. So the um, neck's confirmed as broken at that level. Depending on where the fracture of the bone is, potentially could be really serious. Gavin still doesn't know how serious his condition is. Dr. Buxton heads to Resus to break the news. So how are we doing? Uh, not so Good. Still getting a bit of pain on both, but even with the pain killers. Okay, all right. So we still need to send you for your x-ray of your shoulder, but one of the reasons we've brought you back around here is because on the CT scan of your neck, we found that you've broken it. Right. It definitely happened last yesterday. It's yeah, a recent really fracture. Recent. I see patients at probably one of the most vulnerable times in their lives, and I've always tried to take um, an approach of just being really upfront and honest with patients. That loose bit of bone could move and could cause pressure on one of the 
nerves that comes through the, the top of your neck. Right. So now that we've found out that's what the problem is, then we'll keep your neck very steady. We wouldn't want you to be risking any damage. Right, okay. Any questions about that? Um, is it possible to ring Fairy next to King? She's just sat in the car. Of so. I think um, if, if we make an exception, stuff. she can come in and be with you and just sort of see you and say hello. And see that you're all right. Yeah. Because you've broken your neck, she'll panic. Oh, right? yeah, definitely. Okay. We only see the patients in front of us, but obviously they've got a whole network of, of family and friends and home life that my diagnosis will have a bearing upon. Gavin's wife, Thea, arrives. Not good that it's a broken neck, but at least it answers the question of why it's painful, basically. They now face an uncertain wait to find out if he'll recover. I'm losing track of everything. Over in minus. Emergency nurse practitioner Joe is battling through the long waiting list. Her next patient is Betty, who is 90 today. She's been brought in by her nephew David. Happy birthday! Thank you! You look amazing for 90. You it's, really do, or not? She stopped jogging on the morning. Have you? <laughs> oh, just. Yeah. Then you've stopped jogging. Oh. <laughs> Wearing a mask isn't ideal, is it? Especially if you've, you're deaf anyway, but that is particularly very hard of hearing. What's happened to you today? I've trapped my finger in bathroom. Oh, does it hurt when I press? Does that hurt? Does it hurt? Uh, Can you feel that? Can you feel me touching you there? Yeah, it's yeah. a bit rough. Okay. <laughs> I'm going to dress it for you then. Put your bandage on it. Best part of this job is I uh, come to work to uh, socialise, really, <laughs> as well as earn money. Um, see that as an um, advantage in our role that you know we do get time to speak to patients. Did they get you a cake? Oh. Have you had a cake? I've got twenty-seven cake. Uh, cards. Yes. <laughs> cards. <laughs> Which is not bad for ninety. Bring me one. Wrap it up for you. The misunderstandings uh, it can be funny and Betty luckily sees the um, funny side to it as well. Because it's nice and wrapped up, it should stop bleeding now, oh, OK? Thank you. So leave it for two days. Two days, leave that and don't get it wet. I haven't got my grandmas anymore, but, yeah, an amazing 90 years old and still happy and funny and making us laugh and keeping us entertained. It's great. Try not to do too much tonight. Yeah. Let's keep it like that. Like that? Yes. yes. I can. Do. We will yes. probably have a hot chocolate and go to bed. Oh. Nice to meet you. Enjoy the rest of your birthday. Yeah. Thanks. Okay. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I've got your handbag. I'm tick. And just. And there you go. I've got these. Your sticks. your sticks there. Thank, Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> You're very welcome. Thank you. Thank you. That's amazing. Yeah. Thank you. Recess, Dr. Salim is discussing the different methods of putting dog walker Claire's dislocated elbow back in place. Not a clear lap for them because they shouldn't be like that. Yeah. So you would push it this way away from the bone yeah. down. Yeah. The, the dislocation essentially means that the two bones which fit into each other they have come out of the joint. In Claire's case, when we felt the elbow from outside, it felt a bit odd. It was slightly on the side there and uh, it felt like, you know, it might get stuck and we might struggle with that. Push it like this, away from that. Sorry, sweetheart. Whichever method they use, it's likely to need more manipulation than usual. No, 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 no. And that means even more pain for Claire. A bit like morphine. They might make you feel just a bit woozy when you have it. It'll just feel a little bit cold up your arms. So you can... Do you feel that? No. If this doesn't work, she'll need a general anaesthetic. Is that pain kind of starting to help a bit? No, not made any difference. And that means even longer 
before they can begin the procedure. Hello, Amy. In the hub, Sister Rachel is trying to manage a department with 74 patients and no available beds. There's a lot of issues going on in the department today. A lot. Oh, but right now, she has another concern. You could take it, I bet he took himself off for a drink, hasn't it? A vulnerable patient has gone missing. We're going to have to find him. The hunt is on. I've gone very far. It's not around here. Definitely not in any of the queues, Shizza. Can you straighten your arm down a little bit, Diana? I'm sorry, I know it's complicated. How are you doing, Les? Back in recess. Claire? How are you doing? Can you open your eyes for me? Do you feel like you've had a drink or anything like that? I had a pot of the wine. Okay. That's good, that's progress. I'm just going to give you a tiny bit more. The extra pain relief is finally starting to work on Claire. Okay. No, I've got enough pairs of hands, so are you happy to do counter traction if Jez is in the top? Dr. Salim and the team can finally begin working on the complex dislocation. If this is the, the arm bone and this is the forearm, uh, they, they fit into like that. And when it dislocates, it just goes back here. So all we do is we just pull that bone down and it, it clunks into the socket back in. They've done it. Joint and ligaments are back in working order. I was expecting that to be quite difficult, but once we moved the arm, it was literally in one second that, you know, it just went back in. That clunk was just there straight away. That'll just hold it in nicely, Claire. Okay. Okay. Got her arm up and yeah, away from that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's it. That's it. Try for that. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
Right now, Sandra's not looking for a cure. She just needs some pain relief. And she needs it now. In Barnes and Casualty. Oh, man. It's quite a morning today. Which means even more pressure on staff and wait times. She calls an emergency meeting. So I currently got 74 patients in the department, giving you a two hour and 53 minute doctor wait. Assessment hub, we've got 15 to be triaged, giving us a 38 minute to be assessment wait with three ambulances waiting to offload. When you are coordinating, that means you're in charge of the department and you work alongside the consultant in charge. We have got beds on AMU. They are very few in coming, and I mean very few. So flow out of department is very slow at the moment. And between you, you keep the bird's eye view, making sure everyone's got the support they need. And sometimes that also means liaising with other services within the trust to ensure the patients are getting what they need. But she's had no joy finding a replacement GP. And there's one area of the department that will suffer the most. It's just a bit of a worry that we've got all these patients waiting for a doctor that's not here. And there's more kiddies as well that need to be seen because we send a lot of kiddies to GPs as well. Sister Rachel heads off to paediatrics to break the bad news to Nurse Molly and the rest of the team. We've just gone through medical staffing and we suspect there's going to be no GP at all today. Excellent. We've had a massive increase in the number of patients. Sorry. Thank you. It's not your fault. We do only run on two nurses because we're only a small department. We don't have as many staff members, so it sort of can feel a bit like a headless chicken running around and actually getting them triaged. Right, so you're Emma. I am. And this is Charlotte. Yeah. Oh, Lottie. Yeah. Following an accident at nursery, Mum Emma is convinced her two-year-old daughter Lottie has something stuck in her foot. Well, it's in this foot. Um, there's, it's definitely in there because I've seen it before it while well, it was still bleeding. Did you get a pony? Yeah, were you playing? Yeah. Triaging little children can sometimes be difficult because especially if they don't know you, they might be quite quiet anyway and they don't want to tell you what's wrong and and they can't communicate to you. How did she do it, Mum? I think um a cup has broken on the floor oh, and right. then she's crawled on it, I guess. The nurse Molly can't see anything. But that doesn't mean it isn't there. All right, then. Oh, whatever. That's fine. And this was today? Yeah. What type of material? It's like it? porcelain. You know, like a teacup? Yeah. Like that. That's fine. fine. Can I see you walk? Do you want to walk? Tell you what, you come over here with me, because you're probably going to want me. to come to me, so you're <laughs> definitely <laughs> going to go to mummy. Are you ready? Yes, I did. Come in. Go. Can you walk? Wow, look at you. Oh, you're not bothered. Fantastic. Bothered. That's all we need. Oh, yeah. very tired. Did we have a big cry? Yeah. Did it bleed a lot? Um. Only because we were sort of talking at it, and I'm... <laughs> That's fine, but you definitely saw something in there. Yeah, okay. Well, yeah. How and well. But I've seen many cases where a mum has brought their child in, said something's wrong, on triage they look all right, and then two hours later they've developed something, and you're thinking, how on earth did this mum know? Yeah. So even though Nurse Molly didn't find anything... All right, then. Uh, take a seat back out in the waiting area. With Lottie's mum so convinced, she sends them off to wait for a doctor to check. Yeah. In recess, Dr. Jeremy Thornley is waiting for Claire to come round. Just waiting for you to wake up. You're looking pretty awake now. Not according to Claire. Yeah. This is gonna really hurt. It's all done. Yeah, not Yeah. I'm not too. <laughs> You've got a crack it in place. I've got to yeah. scream as loud as I can. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. We're going to x-ray it again now, check it's in the right place. An extra dose of pain relief seems to have done the trick. Oh, my God, I've got my arm. What does that happen? What? When does that happen? What? Can't remember anything. That's good. The one purpose of the sedation is uh, amnesia. When the patients come back from sedation, they should not remember what has happened earlier. That is the main goal, actually. You okay? Yeah. Right. Okay. Let's see everyone. Go on, now. Get 
much in the same place. Although Claire's feeling a little fuzzy, she can remember what brought her here. I've been for a little while with dogs and I don't know what happened. I just fell. I don't know if it was on the tree roots or the dogs pulled me over and I just landed on my elbow and instantly knew what I'd done. Just excruciating, burning pain. No, I never even realised I was asleep. And I've got a phone. <laughs> Claire is taken off for a scan to confirm her elbow is now where it should be. From Potlis on Yari, sweetheart. In the ambulance corridor, Sandra is in agony, suffering with Crohn's disease. She's had to come to a &E more than 40 times. This pain is horrendous. I've just been bearing it and putting up with it. It's just got too much. <laughs> Anybody coming in with Crohn's giving uh, adequate pain relief as soon as they arrive in the department is probably the most important thing that we... Problematic, because her blood pressure isn't strong enough. So her last reading was 89 over 53, so that's a little low. That's an issue for us because we want to give her morphine for a pain, and uh, morphine can drop your blood pressure quite drastically. So it's just about managing the symptoms and managing her safety at the same time. So that's what we're trying to do at the minute, we're trying to balance. So. That's the job moving forward. And Nurse Jess's other job is to try and keep Sandra's spirits up. All right, where do we normally go? And is it normally tricky? Yes, darling. Oh, I knew we were going to say that. Yeah. <laughs> there you go. Shimmy that up. Oh, what are these? I know. I've to put oh, my That's why we're trying to get these up for you. I'm not going to dig about if I don't get it. The doctor to do it okay because I don't want yeah. to ruin any decent veins you might have hiding. There's no fixing adhesions either, that's a problem for you, isn't it? Right, keep your arm nice and still. We try to do the best we can for the people that need the most. Well, you use it, biggest one, isn't it? Gear, I'm using a baby needle. And it can be very distressing for the patient when we tell them that we can't do much here. Sorry, sweet, bit of a stinger, I'm afraid. You're a good one. Also, I think as professionals, we feel that we are helpless in trying to do what we can do, because there's not much we can add to a long-term condition that we cannot fix, uh, unfortunately. So I've got some fluids yeah. to give you to try and get your blood pressure up a little bit more because I'm sure you know by now morphine can drop it. Right, push a little bit of fluid. Yeah. Get a chance to get that blood pressure up, the morphine, all right? Yeah. I know you're in pain. I just don't want you to pass out and end up in me, so I've yeah. been mortified. Just keep your arm. That's the one. Thank you. Jobs are good then. All right, my love. Thank you. You're very welcome. I'll let you know when I'm dancing. <laughs> Sandra was admitted to a ward overnight, where doctors discovered on this occasion her pain was actually caused by a fifth bout of kidney stones. Oh. All right. No, oh, I'm in pain. Kid. Oh. She's now at home awaiting the date of yet another operation to have them removed. Hello, Sister Rachel is juggling 74 patients. So, where is this patient? But right now, it's the missing vulnerable man who's taking up most of the time. Nurse Jess was treating him. So, Jess, is that what you're ringing me for? Yeah. I'll ring 212 and I'll put the call out for a special. When we have patients, we're worried about, we check that patient every 15 minutes to make sure they're in the emergency department and the where we thought they were. I'm trying to do everything I can for you. I know. When one eats into the emergency nurse's time. Security has been alerted. The search is on. Right, thank you, Jess. Gavin is back in radiology. This time to check for any damage to his shoulder. That's the shoulder, Gavin. With a confirmed broken neck, the team is being extra careful. Just try to get this board under you, Gavin. Yeah. Don't want to move you too much, Phil. I think I continue to be surprised in my job. Probably at least once a week I see something that challenges my knowledge or makes me stop and think twice. All sorts of Gavin. It shows the shoulder nice to wait for the doctor to review it. Ah, 
I'll just have a look at the shoulder x-ray. Over in the hub, orthopedic Dr. Ben Jones has been called to check the x-rays. So look and see if there's any fractures. And there's some good news at last. Can't see anything strikingly. Now Dr. Jones can work out the best course of treatment for Gavin's broken neck bone. It is a serious fracture uh, because it's at the level where all of your arms, your legs, your body um, are governed by the nerves which travel down. Your brain stem and your spinal cord will run in this canal. So unfortunately, he's fractured through here. The good thing is the spinal cord runs at the back, so it doesn't look like it's having a movement back and we could press on to the spinal cord. Gavin had a lucky escape. After two nights on the ward, he was sent home without needing an operation. Six weeks later, he was up and about and able to return to work. Where are you going? The team has been searching for a missing vulnerable patient. Your cigarette, have you told him that's where you are? Sister Rachel finds him in the corridor. Now come on, just let him know, because otherwise... Have you? It's quite demanding on the nurses in the department to keep that patient safe. And it's, it's a worry in the back of the head. Well, let's just check, let's... Come on, come over here and tell Jess something. Let's just tell her where you are, because otherwise she'll be worrying and looking for you everywhere, won't she? Jess, your nurse. Jess, did you know he was going, going out? One less thing for the sister to worry about. But now, there's another. The emergency phone is ringing. That's what you need. Twenty-two year old Ryan is in the ambulance triage cubicle. As in agony. Um, I was just doing a trip to my local store uh, on my way back, uh, rammed by a car from behind and knocked me off my moped. Busted all my arm up. Very scary. Ryan has a suspected broken collarbone. Could you get your helmet on? Just take your glasses off for me. Are you okay just to shine a light in your eyes? Yeah. If you just look straight forward for me. That's fine. We're just going to take you for an x-ray, okay? He's sent straight to radiology. She'll have shoulder. Yeah. But worryingly, the 22-year-old suddenly deteriorates. So you can if Ryan has a severe case of concussion, would you reckon three stand up? Yes. When you know, not flushing. Yeah, I get it. I get it. Sometimes that happens when you have an injury. You'll need to be taken straight to Lisa's. the casualty, Sister Rachel has been fighting a battle on many fronts today. So we still haven't got a GP today, so we've still got all that extra leg work to catch up on. We're literally just catching up now on the bed weight from overnight. We arrived, we were about five, six hours, and now we're, we're at free. Nothing you can do, it, it's just how the day is. But the long waiting time brings frustration. You got an irate patient, where are they? Not here. Sorry. Oh, no. And Sister Rachel is now having to deal with an angry relative. No, no, it's nothing like that. The people of Barnsley are, they're very straight talking, they're very direct, and they will tell you if they're not happy with you. So don't worry, I'll get them to come out to you, okay? But everything's fine, he's okay, and he's going to get the care he needs. Which for me makes it easier to build a relationship with them and get on with them because you, you know where you stand. Bray. She just wants him to go to reception, just so she can see him, talk to him, wave to her, just to reassure her. He can go out to her. Okay. She's sat outside GP room. Okay. Right, so one problem solved. Lottie's foot continues. 
Dr. Safia Yazdani is on duty. Hello. Hello, young dog. Will he be able to find Hello. anything? Hello. Ah, I can see I've been playing around with markers and pens all the time. What happens and how can I help you um, today? She's got a bit of uh, like porcelain cup in her foot. Okay. Yeah. And has she been complaining of pain at all? Off of Not that? really. Not Only really. Um, she knows it's there, so it, and she was like pushing it. Pushing also, it. yeah. So she was. All right. Let's have a look. All right. Where is it? Is it on this side? This side. Which one is it? This side. This side. Ah, you know it. Is that a teddy bear or a duck? And has she been eating, drinking, or yeah, using the right, upstairs? Yeah. What is initial examination didn't find anything. You okay? okay? Okay. And you're definitely sure there was a porcelain matter in there. Yeah. I'm so sorry, so sorry about that. But Mum's instinct means Dr. Yazdani wants to make doubly sure. There's a very small cut in there, and it can be false, but the small cuts in on themselves can be sharp as well. So we're putting a small needle in just to make sure. The problem for Lottie is that finding out is going to hurt. <laughs> Mamma was right after all. Everything gets better with this magic bandage. What? One, two, three. All okay. done. Finished. All done. Okay. No, not finished. Is okay and safe to go home? Keep an eye on her. You can play as much as you want. No yeah. issues down there. You can just just change her bandage if she needs yeah, yeah. as well. The child was brave enough. You know? It could have caused infections if not taken out. And we always say mother's or father's instincts are the best. If she says there is inside something, there is inside. The traumatic day might be all over for Lottie, but not yet for her mum. I'm going to take her home and she's going to have some chocolate, I think. And then I've got to go back to work. <laughs> Claire is in radiology. Yeah, happy with that. All finished. It's the final stage of a traumatic day. She's been given the all clear, so calls boyfriend Simon to pick her up. Oh, this is gonna be fun getting used to one arm. Hey, hello. Some serious help. Okay. Bye. Bye. An emergency nurse practitioner Claire officially discharges her. You'll get a phone call on Monday from the fracture clinic and then there's a few do's and don'ts just because you've had that medication to make you sleepy. Okay, just obviously don't get your past wet. If there's any issues with your pot or anything you're worried about before your appointment, you come back to A&E. Okay. Okay. Is that me done? That's it. Okay, you take care. Claire's elbow was in a cast for three weeks, but she's now fully recovered and back out walking her dogs. <laughs> Sister Rachel is finally starting to get on top of a busy shift. There's good news or bad news? Good news. If the bad news, don't talk to me. <laughs> if it is good news, then I'll be with you in about a minute. I think you like the news. All patients are where they should be. Waiting times are finally down and... Oh, look, it's got me face. <laughs> I need it. Oh, there's a treat from a grateful relative. Back from radiology, 22-year-old Ryan is feeling better. Scans show his moped accident isn't as serious as it could have been. Not too bad, just a bit of pain. Shaken, but in one piece with no broken bones, Ryan is just waiting for his girlfriend to take him home. Would you just go and take Jess off and see the youth for a cup of tea? Yeah, sure. Is that okay? Yeah. Also off home is sister Rachel whose shift is finally drawing to a close. Sometimes it's hard to switch off because you spend your whole day running around at 100 miles an hour, adrenaline filled, and then you finish shift and you're just exhausted. But there's one thing that always helps her get through it. If anything changes, I will come and let you know. Thank you very much. All right. See you in a bit. See you in a bit. You couldn't do this job 
job if you didn't work in a supportive team. And that's what gets us through each day. It is like a family. It's like it's your work family, which is what makes it special. Next time on Casualty 24-7... Very busy today, about 20 that are waiting for bed. And how's your pain now? Yeah, I just feel like I've been in my It's called a boxing fracture. <laughs> it's alright, it's alright. Can I be honest with you, Dean? And it's the return of the hotel inspector, new next Thursday night at 9. Shadow the life-saving work of medical teams over in Stoke, a new series of 999 Critical Condition, Wednesday night at 9. Next to night, a car hits a wall, flips sideways, leaving the driver trapped.